of Chapter 10, Key Issue 3, looking at agricultural regions and MDCs. And we are continuing on with grain farming. And you can see number 33, the concept list. Um, the, the concept of a bread basket, monoculture, winter wheat, spring wheat, reaper and combine, which are machines. And then on to livestock ranching, talk about feedlot. And Mediterranean agriculture, horticulture, and then the last uh, agricultural region is commercial gardening and fruit farming, also called market gardening or even called truck farming. All right, you are welcome to use a chart like this to uh, record the details about each of the farm agricultural regions. So looking at grain farming, grain is often called cereal. Cereal as in you eat cereal uh, made from rice or, or wheat or oats. Um, and so uh, traditionally we call them cereal grains. And they are grains that you can basically make a flour out of. Um, staple grain is basically a cereal grain, but it's what is most eaten by the society that you live in. So in the United States, our staple grain is wheat because most of our, because we eat bread made of wheat and that's our staple food. Mexico, the staple grain would be corn or, or maize because they eat mostly corn. In Asia, their staple grain would be rice. All right, so looking at where grain farming is in MDCs, you can see that it is in the kind of a Midwest part of the United States up into Canada, the Plains. You see it's in Europe, a little further south and also east of right here next to is mixed crop and livestock grazing. So um, just north of pastoral nomadism. And then we also see it down in Australia, and then also in Argentina. The climate uh, for grain farming is that it's a little bit too dry for mixed crop and ra livestock raising. You can irrigate. Um, so it's typically in drier regions. The thing about grain farming is that it's grown for people to eat. Mixed crop and livestock raising, the grain that's grown um, in that pr um, practice, uh, it, corn and soybeans, that is grown to feed animals. So typically the grains grown in grain farming is wheat in the United States, but also corn is a grain, oats, barley, rice, millet, rye, those are all grains. Wheat is the most important cereal grain. It can be sold at a higher price. It's very easy to transport and it's used more for human food so you can get a higher price. A lot of wheat is, is used in breakfast cereals and in snack foods. Wheat in the United States is grown in three areas in the Kansas, Colorado, Oklahoma area, kind of the central Midwest. This is winter wheat. So winter wheat is planted before the winter in the autumn. It will survive through the winter because it's not too cold in these areas. And then it's harvested in the summer. So winter wheat is a little bit further south and it's planted before the winter and remember that it survives through the winter and then harvested in the early summer. Spring wheat is another area and this is further north so the Dakotas, Montana and into Canada. The winter here is way too cold so the spring wheat is actually planted in the spring, at spring after the winter um, and then harvested in the late summer. So spring wheat needs to be planted in the spring because the winter is too cold, so a little bit further north. And then the region in Washington State, the smaller region, um, not as important for you to know. Definitely know winter wheat and spring wheat and where they grow and um, which one's planted in spring and which one's planted before the winter.
So here's a map of your winter wheat, and you can see largely um, in the area around Colorado, Oklahoma, Kansas. And then your spring wheat, which is grown, um, planted in spring, harvested in late summer, in the United States is grown up in your Dakotas and Montana, and then into um, Canada too. All right, United States and Canada together um, um, produce one half of the world's wheat that is exported. And this area is known as the breadbasket. So U.S. and Canada together, half of the world's wheat exports. Now there are, when you look at the map here, you, are, you do see areas where there is a lot of wheat grown production, but as in China and India, most of the wheat grown is actually kept in the country and used to feed the population. So the United States is the world's largest exporter of wheat. Also important uh, producers would be Argentina, Australia, France, United Kingdom, Russia. In the, in the past, um, there, the machinery uh, that is used um, in grain farmly, farming, it is highly, highly mechanized, a lot of machinery. You see um, a, a reaper. So this top picture is a picture of an old reaper from the 1830s. And at this time, it would cut the grain, which would speed up the harvest. But today, we've got um, combines because it's called combine because it does several things, a combination of actions for wheat. It will reap it, it will cut it, it will thresh it. This is when it beats off the seed from the stalk. So you're left with uh, the chaff. And then it will also clean it, which is um, when we talked about process of winnowing. Um, it separates the chaff from the, the hole, which is the seed, the seed, and that's grain, the flour. So grain farming is highly mechanized. Livestock ranching. So you see the places um, where livestock ranching is practiced, and you see uh, western United States, Argentina into Brazil, largely, in uh, Central Asia, into South Asia, I'm oh, sorry, South Africa, and many parts of Australia. So this is a commercial practice That's for, for um, profit. And then the climate is dry. And this is the same type of climate that you would see for pastoral nomadism, too. So we've already talked about the climate. So it's arid or semi-arid, same as pastoral nomadism. And currently, more land has been being converted from ranching to growing crops. Um, just because crops can get more money per area of land. Here's areas in the world where there is livestock ranching besides cattle. Um, and what is raised is, is based on um, often cultural preferences for the type of, of livestock. So you see cattle in the United States, a lot of cattle in South America, but then when you get into, um, well, you see cattle here in, in Europe, but there's a lot of sheep, especially in the UK, sheep in the, middle, in the Middle East, goat in Africa and also in China, lots of cows in India. They don't eat it, but um, they do have lots of cows. And um, goat in Asia here, and then sheep. Um, very typical in Australia and in New Zealand. Um, Australia also have cattle, too. All right. Um, historically, farmers or cattle ranchers would um, be cowboys, and they would go on cattle drives to bring their cattle to market. And in Texas, 
cowboys could get a lot more money per head of cattle if they could get their cows to Chicago. And so when the transportation uh, railroads opened up, they would, the cowboys would drive their cattle to Abilene, Kansas, uh, where they would load their cattle on uh, rail cars and have them transported to um, Chicago where there would be a meat processing plant there. And they could get 10 times as much money. So when the cowboys would drive them into, along the Chisholm, you can see the Chisholm Trail um, that spanned out through Texas and in Oklahoma. When they got into Abilene, um, you know, and, and drop off their their cows, they would, you know, have fun for the night. And so often it was quite rowdy. And so the mayor there, Joseph McCoy, um, hired uh, Wild Bill Hickok as the sheriff to kind of clean up the town and, and help uh, kind of maintain peace. Here's a picture of a cattle drive. So during the days of the cattle, you know, cowboys and cattle, this was um, open grazing. This is very extensive practice of raising cows. Well, then as people started moving west, People wanted to farm, and there was this, um, you know, competition or uh, for the for the land. So farmers wanted to grow crops, and the cattle would often get in their farmers' fields, and so there was this, you know, fighting over the land. Eventually, farmers using barbed wire during these range wars um, actually ha- helped them to win. Um, the range wars and keep the cattle out of their out of their um, farmland. So barbed wire allowed the the farmers to to settle and and allowed them to farm. Um, eventually, which would just be you know maybe in the last I don't know twenty thirty maybe forty years, um, we see these large cattle ranches being converted into uh, farms in confined. Um, animal feeding operations, or CAFOs. And these um, feedlots pack in lots and lots of cattle, so this would be an intensive um, practice. And the cattle, the animals are no longer able to graze anymore, which they naturally do. They're fed a lot of, um, a lot of corn or soybean to fatten them up and minimize their um, transportation um, um, and, and, and included in the feedlots would be the, um, the meat processing plants would be close by. So very much mechanized and um, industrialization of our uh, cattle livestock processing in the United States. Um, in addition to this change from open range to cattle feedlots, um, there was a new breed of cattle. So during cowboy days, we had longhorns. Um, they're big longhorns. But this was changed to Hereford. And Hereford are a little bit more um, fragile as as cows. They do have superior meat, but they were kind of wimps when it, it came to trying to survive the winters and um and insects and stuff like that. So, and they needed to be fed and watered and kind of taken care of. All right, now looking, going on to Mediterranean agriculture and then commercial gardening and fruit farming. So, Mediterranean agriculture is around the Mediterranean, um, but also on west coasts. You can see here in California, you can see on the west coast in Chile, and on the west coast. Um, of South Africa. And this location is very important. You can see the West Coast actually over here too, um, in part of like Central Asia. Um, and this is important because of the climate. So the climate is a, um, we'll move on to a description of climate. The climate is, um, a West Coast climate is where there it receives prevailing winds. You can see there's a map down here. You see the blue lines. The winds blow 
um, in the, the, along the west, into the west coast. And this brings warm, um, moist air. And that warm, moist air, air prevents the temperature from getting too cold. So these west coast climate with the prevailing winds is has wet and moderate winters, so it's not too hot, not too cold during the winters. It's very very wet, um, and then hot dry summers. This allows the fruit, often olives, grapes, to get lots and lots of moisture and plump up during the winter, and then ripen um, with the hot dry summers. Uh, Mediterranean agriculture is for human consumption, and the crops are grown are horticulture crops. These are fruits, vegetables, and flowers, nut trees, and um, particularly grapes and olives. So here's a picture of you know the different things that are grown. You got your nuts, your flowers, different fruits, um, some more flowers, and then you have onions representing the vegetables. And then often um, in the Mediterranean, there's a lot of wine um, produced from the grapes and vineyards there, and also olives. Um, olive oil from the olive trees, and the the climate or the terrain, the topography is hilly because you want a nice uh, drainage um, in your in your in your field. So you don't want it to be flat. So often you have um, hilly hill, hillsides where you have your your grapevines. Looking at commercial gardening, and this is basically just on the east coast of the United States. Um, in kind of along the along the um, the Gulf, and the climate is typically your um, mid latitude. The important thing about the location of market gardening and fruit farming, also called um, truck gar truck farming or market gardening, is that it's close to populated urban centers. Because this is fruit and vegetables that are grown, same as uh, just horticulture, um, it's important that it's close by a populated area because the fruit and vegetables will spoil. So um, that's why it's usually located to market. market. So that hence market gardening. It is very labor intensive. uses a lot of migrant farm workers. Often there are... Um, a variety of crops grown on small farms. Often these farms are organic farms, often sold in farmer's market. And um, they are becoming a lot more popular. People want to buy local, um, organic food. And um, this caters to wealthy and or health-conscious people.